Good afternoon, everyone. So we are going to speak how to work with Sentinel imagery uh, with the support of SNAP and the Quantum Gs. First, a few words about the Sentinel. Sentinel is a bundle of satellites that are from the European Space Agency. And uh, the aim of this uh, mission is to support a broad range of services like monitoring of land cover, agricultural, especially vegetation and forest development, water observation coastal zone, uh, glacier monitor, but as well fire extent, and especially flood mapping and management. For us, as a site planner, it's uh, most important the flood mapping and management because in many cases we are confronted in area where flooding is an issue. I remember my last mission in Mozambique, it was a big issue. Now in Syria, again, it's a big issue. And it's always very difficult to define the flooding extent and to understand if one site is in flood prone area or not. The good thing about Sentinel is that it has a resolution of 10 meters per pixel, up to 60 meters, depending on the band. And it's not a very good resolution like, uh, like uh, Google Earth, for example. But with this resolution, you can already understand where was the floating. You can understand if it's a forest, if it's a uh, bare land, or if it's an uh, urban area. And the good thing of this Sentinel too, as well, is that uh, you have uh, at least three to four pictures per month, and you can choose the time you can select the period where you want to take the picture from. The bad thing about that is that it's there are pictures from the satellite. So if the weather is bad, if it's cloudy, you don't see anything. So how Sentinel works, uh, it has a, it makes every time 13 picture with 13 several bands, so different wavelengths. It is revisiting the same area at least every 10 days, but in some cases where you have overlapping, you can have more picture. And uh, one picture uh, has a swat of 290 kilometers, so it takes big portion of the land. And uh, like I was telling you, this resolution is 10 meter per uh, pixel, 260 depending on the, on the, on the bands. But also it's good that it's free and uh, it has open data policy. It means you can have it anytime, whenever you are in the world. And it covers almost all the walls except the poles. So we were saying that uh, Sant Sant Sentinel-2 has 13 bands. You can see here the description of those bands, depending on the uh, wavelength. And each band has a several different uh, resolution. Generally, we can say that if you go towards the short wavelength, you see more the water. So the water doesn't absorb the light, so it reflects the light, while the land doesn't. Uh, sorry, while the land absorb the the, the, light, the light and doesn't reflect it, so it looks dark, and the water look looks more colorful. On the length, wavelength is the opposite. The water absorbs all the light, so it looks dark. And the, the land looks more bright. And especially the chlorophyll uh, reflects light in different colors. So you can really uh, distinguish type of uh, vegetation that you have on, the, on this picture. And like I was telling you, some bands have a good resolution, 10 meters per pixel. Uh, and some other are not so good. But with, uh, like I tell you, with 10 meters per pixel, you can already do a lot of things. Alone with this band, you cannot really do a lot. You can display a band, a picture. It looks uh, nice, but it's very difficult to understand the, the information on, on it. But what we do and what we are going to see is how to combine those bands in order to uh, put emphasis on some interested issues. For example, below you have um, the most important band combination. You see, for example, if you combine B band four, band three and band two, you will have an effect 
like natural color. So in a, it's a, it's an imagery, an orthophoto. And uh, you can see the other type of combination, depending of, on your need, you can choose the right combination. For us as a site planner, I would say that the most important one are the natural color. So the, how you would see it if you would sit on the satellite. This is interesting because you can monitor, for example, the development of your, of your site. You can have the colored infrared because this helps you to understand vegetation towards urban and uh, you would see as well towards water and flooding. And then also you have moisture index. This will show you the quantity of water that you have on the surface. Of course, there are many other uh, combinations, and uh, we are going to see them in the next step. Here on the chat, you can have a, a description of this of those combinations. One second, and I give you as well a link now on the chat. If I found it, should be ready. Yes, here I give you the link on the chat. You can eventually even now see the uh, documents that show and explain the combination, how you should uh, interpret this combination. But we are going to see that later more in detail. How we are going to proceed? We are going to work fresh from the very scratch to the final result. How it works? First of all, with GIS or Google Earth, any GIS, it could be as well uh, uh, ArcGIS. We are going to define the area of interest, depending where you are, it can be Mozambique, it can be Syria, like in these cases. We define it with Google Earth, so we know where we are. We open with internet Earth Explorer. It's a website where you can find a lot of uh, online imagery. On Earth Explorer, we have to navigate to our location of interest. We have to define what type of um, cloud coverage do you accept. You can say, I want only picture with 50% maximum of coverage, cloud coverage. And then you define the time of uh, the period of interest. It depends. If you want to see, for example, the flooding extent, then you should choose a period where flooding occurs. If you want to see the latest development of your site, of course, you choose the latest picture. And then once you have set those uh, uh, criteria, you can filter and see the result and check the quality of the result. You check the quality before downloading the result because uh, those results are very heavy. It can be from 500 megabyte to one gigabyte. All, all the bands are downloaded at the same time. Once you have downloaded, uh, let's say, the in, the picture that you are you have selected, you start to combine those picture in Snap is a software that I'm going to show. And later, once the combination is finished, you can easily export this uh, combination into Quantum GIS or Google Earth and then develop your floating map or your map, whatever, how, how you like. Uh, what you need for this process is to download and install Snap. Snap is an application that has been uh, developed especially for Sentinel. It's free, open source. It works on all the platform, Windows, Unix, and um, Mac. And uh, it's rather uh, user-friendly. Like I was telling you, you define the area of interest. We are here in Syria. That's the area where I'm currently working on, uh, west of Aleppo. That's where most of the IDP sites are actually uh, identified. I show you just these points. Those points are the points where most of the IDP sites that are flooded. So what I do at the very first step, I define my area of interest. If you do just a shape file and you have it like that. What you need to do now when you have your shape file the very first step that you have to do is to zip this shape file. I go to here, I go to, um, I think it's workshop. Yes, here you see I have my shape file area of interest, this one. 
you took the five or six shape file and you zip it in one simple zip save file. This is important for the next step. This is very easy. So you zip it and you have this area of interest zipped one. Okay. And then you can go to internet and you open this Earth Explorer. If you want to log in, you have to register first. And once you are registered, you will see your name here on the bottom right. And like I was telling you, now you have to navigate on your area of interest. You can navigate by the cursor like I do now, but the best way to do it is using your zip file. You just go under search criteria, KLM and shape upload. You could as well use a KLM file if you don't like to work with the shape file. I prefer to work with shape file because everything will be at the end of my uh, quantum GIS. So you choose the shape file, you select the shape file, and here you will see the area of interest zip should be, uh, what is it here, zip. Okay, now I am uh, at the right position here. You see now exactly the same area of interest that I was, I have here. I have it on my Earth Explorer. So it's easy. At this point, you have to choose the period. From which period do you want to have the, the picture? We start with the current situation. I want to know if my refugee site are developed or not. So I want the latest of the available picture. That's why I just take all the available picture in December here, data range. I start, I want the picture from the 1st of December up to date, 22. I have to tell the web page what kind of information do I want to download. And like you see here, you have a lot of information. You can have Landsat if you want. You can have a digital terrain model if you want. But this time we want Sentinel. So I have only one option for Sentinel. I click on that. So now this, uh, the web page knows that I'm looking for Sentinel imagery. And then you have an additional criteria. Uh, important for us is the cloud cover. In this case, I don't put any criteria because there are anyway few images, only three, maybe four. Uh, but anyway, before downloading, I will check the quality of those pictures. Once I have selected the date, the area, the type of information, I can go on the result and the system will give me the information. So like you can see, I have 50 pictures that are of interest. You can click on this show footprint you can see the footprint of my picture. This is uh, included because it takes this small part of my area of interest, but I'm not interested on that. The same on that is not interested. Just for this small corner, I got it. This one also not good. This one, this one seems to be good because it covers all my area, but I still, I want to know the quality of this picture. So this is taken on the 21 of uh, December, yesterday. You can click here and then you see that you can download the full package, which is 736 megabytes or just one picture. I just want to download this one just to see the quality. This is short and I can open it straight away. So you see, Okay, this area on the top is fine, but here where I have all my sites is cloudy. So I don't, it's not a good picture. So I, I don't, I will not use it. So it's not a good option. So let's check with another one. So this is not good. This is also outside of my area of interest. This looks good. No, it's not good. Sometimes you have picture like that, you see the black screen, for some reason, satellite image is black. 
no idea why and I don't understand why they put it on the internet, but this is of course useless, you cannot use it. So nothing and this one as well is not good. So I go to the next page. I have this one, obviously you can see already on the, on the icon here that is full of uh, clouds, so useless. This is black, this is black, this is black. Clouds, 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 all clouds, so useless. Go to next. Useless, useless, this one, not good. This one, not good. Not interesting, not interesting, not interesting. Clouds, next one. Here, this one seems to give good and uh, it is taken on the 6th of January of the December, not such a long time ago. We can check eventually the quality uh, is just four megabytes, should be quick. This time I download it as well because if you have downloaded it, not only you can open it straight away, but you can also open it in quantum GIS and it will be already georeferenced. This looks very good, so no clouds at all. And I can even open it on quantum GIS. You go on Open Data Source Manager. It's a raster. And it should be georeferenced on download. It should be this one. Let's see. I add it. Okay, you see, it's not bad. I put it here. It's not bad, uh, but this is just one picture and it's not all the bands. For this case, I decide to download the full package. So 741 megabyte. And this is the full package of the date of uh, 6th of December. Now, just to download, you just go here and you download it. Of course, I don't do it yet because it will take 10 minutes, if not 20 minutes, but I have done it previously. And it's there under workshop, uh, sorry, under Sentinel. When you download the full package, it will be on a zip format. It was the 6th of December, this one. You see almost 600 megabyte. So you unzip it and then you have this automatically this type of folder. That's fine. And now it's time to start with work with Sentinel. When you, you have to download Sentinel, of course, and uh, uh, open it, hopefully it works. I didn't have any trouble in my cases, but it shouldn't give trouble. So once you have Snap open, first thing that you have to do is just open the uh, directory of the images that you have uh, um, downloaded. This was the 12th of, or the 6th of December. Okay, and then you have this inside. Take the last one, the XML file and open it. It will take one short moment, it's a lot of information. Okay, now you see automatically this layer appears here. And if you open the layer, you have all the information and you have the bands, the 13 bands separated. Now what we want to do also is to include in this snap our area of interest. Because if I open one band, for example, let's open band two, Always it takes some time because every image is, is very big. Ah, okay, it's coming. So you see, that's just band two. If you zoom in, it doesn't give you so much information, but you have to open it anyway, so that at this point you can as well download your area of interest. You go on vector, you import your shape file that you have previously defined uh, with the quantum G's. We call it area of interest, open it. Okay, this is now my area of interest, exactly the same that was defined before with quantum G's. 
And you see, we have much too much information and this is very heavy information. That's why the next, what we are going to do is to crop these pictures, all the bands, so that we have a smaller amount of data. So I zoom in on my area of information with the wheels and I say, okay, like that. Okay, I can crop this area. How I have to do, I go to raster, I go to subset, and, oops, what is it? I go to subset, you see this mask appears and you see the blue border. That's exactly the, the, the area. You can play and increase or decrease the blue border, but I don't touch it because I want this area. I just say, okay. And now automatically a new subset is created. And this subset is the exactly the same set of information, but cropped or, 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 or um, clipped. I don't need this anymore. Now, if you open this subset, I have exactly the same information, but in a smaller area. Take some time again, take some time, try again. Okay, it's there. Now, if you see, if I zoom out, I just have this area. All the rest is cropped out. Perfect. I can deactivate our area of interest. Now, I want to change the name of this subset because the name is very long and it is confusing me. Just right click on it, properties. I call it subset and I just put the date. Subset 2020-1206 and the rest. Okay, now I have this subset. Now with this one, I can do the very first combination of bands. We do the first combination, which is a true color combination. So uh, orthophoto, actually very, very easy. You click on the subset that you want to combine. You right click and you click open RGB image window. Like that, you get this um, presentation and you have three options. You can have natural color like you would see if you would sit on the satellite false infrared color and atmospheric penetration. Let's do natural, natural color. Okay. And is the software is now doing the combination automatically. At the beginning, it takes some time. After a while, it's getting quicker. Now you can see, I have already, I can see a little bit uh, situation, how it was looking on the 6th of December. You can see the river properly, this uh, lake, the cities. And this is my first picture that I want to import on quantum GIS, to export it on quantum GIS, because then all the, let's say, the interpretation is going to be on quantum GIS. So to import it in quantum GIS, you just right click on the image, export view as image. We go on workshop, subset, you click here, full scene, full resolution and geotiff. It must be a geotiff. So when you open it in quantum GIS, it will be automatically georeferenced. Uh, no. Okay, you export it, save, here, tuck. And now once it's done, you go on quantum gist, this I take away, remove, yes. And I open my very first image. It's a raster. I go on uh, workshop. And here I should have my first subset, natural color. And if everything is fine, it should appear georeferenced. Exactly. Now I see here my three, four refugee sites that I want to closely analyze. 
and also additionally the other refugee sites. This is not a flooding analysis, but already starts to show you a little bit how the situation looks like. And compared to satellite, is not that good because the satellite Google Earth is, has a higher resolution. Like you see, this is the satellite Google Earth, but this is much more recent. That's the difference. So if you go, for example, to cut site, let's see if there is a difference between the satellite time and this one, not that much. Ah, yes, here in this area here, for example, when the Google Earth took the images, there was no sync. Now, obviously there is something, probably it's, it's a refugee site or something like that. So with that, you can monitor a little bit, even if it's not in good quality, the development of your site. And uh, on the same page, we can have the first, let's say, interpretation of our bands. You right click again on the subset, you go again on RGB image window, you get this one, and you can have, let's say, false color infrared. False color infrared uh, helps you to understand uh, where you have vegetation or where you have urban area, and as well, it shows you well where you have water or wet areas. So it's a combination between band eight, four, and three, and all the three bands have 10 meter resolution. So the result is 10 meter resolution, like that. Again, it takes some time. Voila, again, I take away my vector data. Now you see, obviously, this is water, this seems the red one seems to be uh, green fields and uh, let's see if you can see something interesting the black one is obviously water again so more black is more wet probably red is um, red a good crop and obviously we can see the urban area if you want we can export on quantum gist the same way you right click on it, export as image, full size, full resolution, GeoTIFF, and with this time we call it false color. Okay, done, and on quantum GIS, we can open it again. False color, and we have it. Okay, now already we have two information which are very, very recent, two weeks old information. And this is very powerful for our job. But now my task is actually to know if my sites, especially those ones that have been built here, let's take away everything and let's go back on Saturday. Those sites are flood prone or not. And for that, I need special combination. Like I was showing you at the very beginning, for us site planner, when you have to do a flooding analysis, important are this band combination. Moisture index is important. So it's not really a band combination. It's, it's a kind of calculation of combination. You see band eight minus band 11 divided band eight A plus band 11. So how to do it? And what does it show? This will show you how much water is in the soil. Of course, if you have a lake, it's full of water. If it's flooded or muddy, it's some water. If it's dry, it's dry. So how to do that? Again, uh, we go on our subset. We right click RGB and we can choose the band. But if you see, if you put another band, let's say band 10, you have an error. Reference raster are not on the same size. Why? The thing is that those bands, they have different resolution. Some have 10 meter resolution, 20, 30, or 60. And you cannot compare bands of different resolution. 
that's one that's one you have to unify the resolution it means you have to resample your bands and you have to resample your bands in a way that all the bands have 10 meter resolution resampling one band of 30 meter resolution doesn't improve the quality it just improve the resolution but the quality is still the same because uh, one pixel of 30 meter by 30 meter is divided by nine pixel of same um, information of 10 by 10. So we resample now all this band set. Again, I go to subset, I go to raster, geometric, and resampling. Doing like that, I have this one. You see my parameters. I took the subset that has been cropped before. The name, the target name will be subset resampled, it's fine. But now I have to give resample parameter. I know that band two has 10 meter resolution because here we have band two, 10 meter resolution. I could also have band three or band four, but I take band two. So I want to resample everything on the same size of band two. I do that, I run and it's done. And a new subset called resampled has been developed. It's again, we have exactly the same content, but now all the bands have the same resolution. And the magic, if you right click on that and you do RGB image window, you see that you have many more options. Now you can really start to combine many, all the bands together and as well do the mathematics. You see, you once you do it at home, you can really play around and, and, and see what all these bands means. And as well, the paper that I have given on the chat explain a little bit uh, what are for those, uh, let's say, combination for. But here we see something interesting for us, Lat uh, land and water. Okay, let's try with this one. So this is a combination, band eight, 11 on four. I do okay. It is calculating. And now we can see how it looks. We have a different color again, land and water, obviously, water is kind of black, land is bright, and then you see here green, you see clearly the river here, clearly the water, it's interesting. And when we go after on our refugee site, we can see if there is water or not. But this is a picture done on the beginning of December. And beginning of December, the raining season was didn't start. So it's not really interesting for us. We can do that, of course, but it's not really interesting for us to see the flooding, the flooding extent. We should choose a period where we can expect flooding. And the, the good period, I mean, or the bad period for flooding is actually in Syria, February and March. So that's why we go back on our internet and we choose a different period. This time we choose not a date, but we choose a month. You can here you can see, okay, show me everything in March from the beginning of the satellite to the end of the satellite. Now I have all the images of March, and now there are many images because there are around uh, six years. So image for every merge during six years. That's why maybe it makes more sense to, uh, okay, this is the game, so to choose additional criteria and to choose maybe 50% of the cloud so that the very bad picture, they are filtered out automatically. You go on the result. And now we have, like you see, all the picture of March. 
that somehow are touching our area of interest. And we have 162 picture. You see, this one, for example, just touch a little bit. So that's why I, should, I change a little bit my area of interest so that I will have less, less uh, result. Because like I've seen before, some result appears just because of small corner. I don't want that. Now I decrease my area of interest. I do again the result, the search. Now there are 72 just because I've decreased little bit this area of interest. But now I can really check this one on the 26th of March in 2020, looks good. This one also looks good, but it has some clouds like you can see. This is bad, this is bad, next. This is bad, this, this is as well bad because it's not covering our area. This looks good, yes. So you see out of that, you have several options. Of course, now we are not going to check all the option, but on the real world, you download all this option and then you can really see, uh, you can really choose the best one. In our case, we download the option of the 7th of March. Let's see if I can find it. The, uh, 7th of March. Uh, this 9th of March is not good. This one. I choose, the, I prepare, of course, the workshop. I, I don't want now to download everything. So we download this one. I chose this one because I identified there was good floating there. So again, you can, one second. On the same way, you can download just the overview picture or the full bundle, which is again 700 megabyte. You click on that and you start the download. I have it already and uh, I open it on Sentinel now. Now I decided to download the 7th of March. Is there already? I choose 7th of March, which is 7th of March, this one. Again, you download it on a zip format, you unzip it and it's here. Same system, you have this XML file. It should appear. Yes, now we have it here. Now, the, this one we can take away so you are, we are not confused. We have exactly the same system. We have our bands and everything is there. Good. Again, we have to um, display one band and we have to crop it again. Let's display again band two. So we can crop it. on the same process like before. Now it's a picture of the 7th of March on 2019. Like you see again, Bantu alone doesn't help you a lot, but we have to display it so that we can have our area of interest displayed. Again, we import our area of interest, area of interest, that's here again, good. I zoom in and I crop like I did before. More or less like that, fine. And now again, mm, raster subset. I have this mask again, wait a second. Okay, here again, the blue area that I can change, okay. And I have a new subset that I change the name again. Properties, I call it subset, just the date, oops, sorry. 7th of March. Okay. Now I have this subset. I could, like before, straight away do the, the natural color 
But before doing that, I will, uh, I will um, resample everything that I can do straight away as well, the uh, moisture index and the water analysis. So to uh, resample it, we go on raster, we go on geometry, resampling, like we did before. Uh, we, this time with a subset of March, you see. And a sample parameter, again, band two, 10 meter resolution, run. Okay, close, that's done. Now I have a subset called resampled. And now I can do the first um, analysis. We have, first of all, natural color. It's always good so that if you see a color later on the analysis, you can always try to identify what is it. And Google Earth is not, not always possible because things may have changed. So I do that. Okay, I have it. I take away the mask. That's the natural color. I export that again on quantum GIS, export you as image. Workshop, it's a geotiff, full sheen, full resolution, the date and its natural color. Now, to run, go. Okay, back, done. Okay, now here I can import it like we did before. March natural color, it's here. Right, okay. You see, this one is kind of dark. We can make it a little bit bright. Click twice on that and you can probably do it. I'm oh, sorry, I did on the right, wrong area. So you can have a little bit more information if it's bright. Okay, now it looks kind of better. You still have some information. You see, it's cloudy, partially. Most probably, car side is not good. It's plenty of clouds, but the rest seems to be fine. But now let's do the first water analysis. You go on subset, you right click again and RGB again. And this time we choose land and water. It works because we have resampled before. Tuck. This should give emphasis on wet or not wet areas during the rainy period of March of 19. Water obviously is dark. You have to be very careful when you analyze this type of picture because clouds make a shadow that also looks dark like water. So here obviously this black here is not water but it's clouds. But here inside you can see now that in this village, for example, there is kind of floating here, there is floating here, there is floating here, but let's export it on quantum GIS, like usually export geotiff full sheen, and this is called now land water. Water, save, okay. Okay, open it again, tuck, land water. Okay, okay, now we have it. Now we can start to analyze. Let's analyze this. Uh, this is obviously cloud because so this is the cloud and this is the shadow. You can see the same shape, but here you can properly see the river. You can see, for example, here it is not floated. Uh -huh. But uh, I wish you, let me see here. Here it was floated a different period. So on this, on the a few weeks ago, there, there was a lake here. Last year in March, it was a green field. Okay, fine. Now before continuing, I want to show another type of combination, which it's not. It's you go here and here. You have these those options that once home you can you can really 
try and, and see what they show. But now I want to show you this moisture, moisture option. It's actually a combination of bands, a mathematical combination. You go on um, raster, band mats, you write moisture here, and here you have to write the, cal the calculation that you want to do with the bands. If you remember well, there was an interesting one here, moisture indexed. It's band 8.8 8 minus band 11 divided 8.8 8 plus 11. <coughs> and this gives you actually two type of information uh, from a range from minus one to one. One is wet and one can be linked to a color and minus one is dry. All what is in between is kind of wet, kind of dry. So let's do this band combination. I write here. Uh, so I have it now, since this moisture band combination, I use it frequently, let's say, I can save it for further use. I save it, I have it saved it already here, but now I save it on the workshop. I save it and I call it my expression moisture. So next time I don't have to type it again. I just can take it. Okay, okay. And now the software is doing the band combination. You see it's black and white and white means water and black means dry. Let's take it first on quantum G, it's easier. Again, right click, export as an image. Um, same process, GeoTIFF, full sheen, full resolution, uh, moisture, fine. I can open it on quantum. My story it's here. Perfect. Okay, add and close. Okay, now I have it. Okay, now you can see here we have the other side. Where is water is white. Where it is black is no water. So it's very interesting so that you can see the new side. For example, let's assume that they identified an area here. Let's say that our field officer or we identified this area as a potential site. In Google Earth, it looks beautiful. If um, we check uh, during the rainy season, we see that we have plenty of white around there. So it means this area most probably is going to be flooded or is going to have some trouble. And this helps now the site is very small. If the site would be bigger, it would be help us much more. If I take the example of Bangladesh, where we were asked to do the flooding analysis, the big issues was to know the area that was flooding during the rainy season. If I would have known this system before, I would have find it out easily and I wouldn't it would much it would be much more easier to do flooding analysis just following, let's say, the white spot on the right period. Now, this is the process. Let's do that again. Here, you can as well change the color. So we say white is water and black is, is um, dry, but you can change it. If you don't like it, you just click twice on the, on the layer. You go to... Um, single band pseudo color, and then you can choose the range. I want to do it easy, I want to simplify. I want to have a go or no go area. Let's say where I feel there will be water. I don't want people. Where I feel it will be dry, I can't have people. So I create my new ramp with color preset, okay. I say two color, this one is red, which is no go, and one is green, which is go. Fine, okay. Now I have two colors. So if it's, uh, let's see now what happens. 
Now you see, I have, uh, let, let's check, sorry. It was green, uh, opposite. Uh, opposite, I choose the opposite. Let's see what is the water. The water, what is the water? Uh, here was the water, okay. Okay, now, so green, it's now water and black, sorry, red is uh, no water. So I just have to make it different, invert color ramp. Now, everywhere where I feel that I have red is definitely a place where we will expect water. Everywhere where it's green, it looks better based on the imagery of 7th of March and 19. But of course, now we don't have time. It's already, my time is already over. I want to show you another, uh, uh, another quantum G's where I have downloaded several days so that we can really compare the location based on several different dates. I did uh, several, um, say, band uh, combination. And on the same way, I have exported from Snap all the imagery into Quantum Gs. Here I have um, several um, um, groups. These groups, uh, I call it natural color, where I have uh, all the, the satellite imagery and all the situation based on the date. Uh, this situation, for example, it was cloudy. This situation, based on the date. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, one side. Based on, then I have a group which shows the moisture index. Let's move to this small area here. Zoom to later. I have here identified some area. I have identified this potential spot. I want to see if this potential spot are um, good for refugees or not. So let's see first the first subset, the moisture. I have the moisture of 7th of March. I see some white spot here, it means water here. So this can be in danger. Let's see what happens on the 25th of February. It looks still white, so it means Kian area definitely is going to be wet there. Let's see what happens on 26th of March. It's still some water here. Here the picture is bad. And here the picture is bad. Let's see now with the land water what happens. Uh, on the so it's here on the 7th of March. Here you see the water very clear. That's water. So you see, apparently there is a river. And if I have the feeling that apparently there is a river, I do the watershed analysis. If you don't know what is the watershed analysis, check on my YouTube channel. There is a tutorial how to do the watershed analysis. Watershed analysis give me the natural stream when it rains. Here is the streams. So actually, I see there is a natural stream going from this direction to that. So clearly, this area is going to be flooded. And this side here, most probably, is going to be flooded as well. Let's see what happens on the 25th of February. Still, still water ahead around here, apparently water. So bluish is kind of between uh, water and, and, uh, and uh, urban. Here. Again, still have the flooding here, still have the flooding. This area is kind of flooded as well, and so on. So more picture you have, more easier it is for you to understand how your location will behave during the rainy season or during a certain period. And then there are also this atmospheric penetration. There are many other combinations that you have to check Let's take, for example, just to show what is the atmospheric penetration. Here again, you can easily see the floating, the, the blue one. That's the floating. Here is floating again. Let's see what is the color infrared again. 
Here is the vegetation, but here probably this is flooding as well, and this is as well flooding. So you can see that combining many, many bands together and many pictures of different period, you gain a lot of information. More time you invest on interpretation, better knowledge of your area you get. And of course, once you know what happens on your site, you have to develop a nice map where it is clearly to see where it's suitable for refugees or not suitable, where it's going to be floated or not. And you can also write, this is based on the imagery of March of 2019, something like that, so that your statement has a scientific background, it's not just estimated. This is a big difference between the uh, simulation that we have done in previously, floating simulation. During a simulation, you make assumption that might be correct, might not be correct. In this case, with Landsat, you don't make any assumption, but you check the picture, how it was in the past during a special uh, period. Marina is also not only impressive, but it, it is really useful also because uh, what you need to do like in Mozambique last time, for example, once you have identified your area, you really can have a lot of information about your area. And once you have the information from the office, you can put this information as well in your GPS and verify on the field this information.